Okay, today I'm working on my uh, KitchenAid built-in fridge. It's about 10 years old and uh, the water dispenser leaks. So you go to fill a cup of water and underneath there's a polyethylene hose runs along here, back there, comes back through this and I believe it has cracked inside of this tube. So this tube is there because when the door opens this whole wiring harness and the water have to move and uh, and uh, the, I think there's a little bit of torque in here that may have broken broken it because it's it's uh, you know kind of twisting as it goes open and closed every time uh, I had a service guy come in to, to, to try to fix it because it looked like it was gonna be a tough I didn't really want to work on the bottom of my fridge, but um, he said it was unfixable. So the, uh, the door here is foamed in, so you can't replace the line that goes down there. And they don't sell replacement doors anymore. They're uh, no longer available. Uh, and their website points out that you shouldn't even try to call because there's nothing they can do. So I'm gonna try to fix it. So the first step for fixing it is to empty out their fridge. I took all the drawers out because I'm going to knock this thing over on its side. Uh, you might be able to get away with jacking it up if you've got some fancy appliance jacks. I do not. Uh, so yeah, so I've got a basement freezer and some coolers and uh, yeah, hopefully this doesn't take too long. All right, next up, the uh, kick plate is already taken off. There's a screw here and a screw there. Those came out and I'm going to raise the, sorry, lower the rollers here. And, and here by turning these two uh, to, uh, to help roll it out. And before I move it, I'm actually gonna take this top piece of trim off so that way I can turn it off. Um, it just pulls out at the bottom. Can't do it with one hand. And snaps and then say so pulls off the top definitely gonna turn it off before I move it uh, I can almost reach the plug but I think I'm just gonna get that after it's moved Okay, now I can reach behind it to get the supply line turned off and disconnected. Oh gosh! All right, that's off. Now I'll pull that hose off and then get the plug that's up there at the top. Okay, I may not have mentioned the water supply line has water in it, so don't forget your towel. Uh, and then, in order to tip this on its side, I need to remove this piece of trim that's sticking up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this off. Okay, I got my trim piece off. I'm gonna set it off to the side. Careful, it does have some sharp edges. I actually cut my finger without noticing as I was uh, scooting the fridge out. It's a little cut, not too cut. So I'm setting this down on the freezer side and uh, I need to be able to remove this part down here. Um, so I've actually doubled up my layers of towels here to make sure that I've got a little clearance off the ground uh, to pull that out. Hopefully that's enough. We'll find out in a second. Uh, so I read the uh, uh, installation manual says the tip over radius is about nine and a half feet. So uh, make sure you got at least 10 feet to uh, push this thing over. And uh, yeah, I think Tina, if you want to lift from the other side and I'll catch it on this side. Okay. Sure, yeah, it's gonna be great. Right. Top. Yep. Here. Wait, pause. I'm going to put a towel at the bottom, uh, right where it's going to hit the ground, okay. just to uh, not scratch that part up. Okay. Refrigerator is top heavy and tips easily when not completely installed. Nice. Keep doors taped shut until refrigerator is completely installed. 
Okay, so I ended up putting one towel closer to the bottom to make sure uh, it didn't scratch up the floor as I was tipping it over. And also I grabbed a bungee cord to uh, secure the doors. Uh, I think packing tape would work really well if I wasn't planning to open and close the freezer door so many times. So I'm gonna do this uh, just to keep it from flopping around too much. Okay. All right, I'm ready when you are. Ready. Okay, let's uh, push. Push? Yeah, whoa. Okay, hold on. Push I'm uh, push. slipping on the, the towels are slipping, yeah. Put your foot on the other side and grab the cabinets. Yeah, okay. There you go, you ready? Yep. I can't quite, okay, there we go. Okay, I'm pulling I'm as hard as I can. I'm not much right now. I'm pulling as hard as I can and you just push harder. Push harder, okay, there we go. Oh. Okay, now I got it. Sorry, I was trying to do it gently. I couldn't, I couldn't pull. Okay. Okay. Uh, Where do you want to go now? Why don't you come over here and help me set it down gently? If you can get around. I think you'll be okay. Yep, I'm um, pushing. Okay. I'm uh, holding it up. Holding it up. Okay, I'll hold up right here. You hold up over there. Uh, yeah. Watch your fingers, watch your fingers. Okay, and down. Watch your fingers. Okay. All right. All right. I feel like this is the part of the video where I should warn everybody to wear work gloves. Uh, I've got now two cuts, and we haven't even gotten into fixing the hose yet. <laughs> You'll have a puddle when you tip it over, <laughs> which is good because it's on towels. Okay. Uh, next is to uh, yeah pull this off to reveal how and where this hose is broken. Hopefully it's super obvious. So I three, see three uh, quarter inch sheet metal screws up here. Got this uh, Black and Decker uh, screwdriver. I've had it forever. It's powered by double A's and uh, it always works. It's really handy, even though it's slow. Luckily, I've got a, a bit with a uh, magnet in it. So I cannot reach where these are. Give me one more. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more right here. That's the seventh one at the bottom. Next up, I'm going to figure out how to get the wiring harnesses and hose to unloop through this. So from the bottom of this uh, freezer door, the wires go through that loom and pop into this box. I'm going to take out these two screws and see if, uh, see if it shows me that there's a connector in there I can, I can take out. So it looks like uh, two connectors and the and the ground wire. Need to need to get this disconnected. Hmm. Not bad at all. And then uh, this water line comes out pretty easy. The blue. Uh, end of this pushes in and uh, the hose pops right out. So now that this pipe is free of the the, the, the feet that, that hold up the refrigerator, uh, I'm gonna 
take the tape off of this and this, uh, and then pull these two screws out. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully be able to pull this out from the freezer. Seems to be some sort of like. Okay. Okay, so I started getting the the loom pulled back and was trying to uh <laughs> trying to trying to see where the hose was going and it broke off in my hand. Uh so it looks like maybe the break there's not a break up here at the at the top of the elbow. Maybe it was just this break from the flexing that it does back there all the time. Uh it's still too close to this that I can't put a regular connector on it. So I'm going to use uh, use some heat and a little bit smaller hose to try to get those two ends connected. I still, I think I need to get that pipe off. So I'm still going to try. All right, to get the second screw down here, I need to do uh, prop the freezer open a bit. Uh, otherwise, this was in the way. Now that this is loose, um, I could pull. I don't know how far I want to go. I'm going to have to push them back through. But I did want to look at the, the hose in here. It seems like it's okay. Alright, so I decided to pull this uh, the hose out of the, the plastic tube it was living in. Uh, so in here, there's no give at all. Like I'm pushing and pulling, it's not moving. It's foamed in, uh, but the good news is this whole section looks great. Uh, it's really, it really just started breaking in this one section and uh, it came apart in my hands as I was uh, disassembling it. So um, yeah, that's plenty of length to, uh, to repair it. So I'm gonna use a heat gun uh, and some extra hose to replace the, the broken off section and I'll probably Give this a fresh cut to uh, to give it a clean a clean bit to work with. So um, yesterday, I uh, took two pieces of uh, polyethylene tubing, uh, five sixteenths outside diameter, and I uh, melted them together. Now here's what I actually went and bought from uh, from Lowe's. I got uh, this uh, five sixteenths outside diameter, three sixteenths inside diameter. Uh, 10 feet of uh, polyethylene tubing it was like two or three bucks, two bucks, yeah. And then, tw unfortunately, 25 feet of quarter inch outside diameter, and then uh, 17 hundredths inside. Uh, so this is pretty. This is this quarter inch is pretty thin. But what I was able to do was uh, snip off a couple inches of it, uh, warm up the larger tube, uh, and then stretch it out with a pencil just to make it a little bit wider so that the, I can get the, the quarter inch tubing inside of it. And so I got it in just a, you know, just a, a quarter inch there. And then uh, the other side did the same thing, warmed it up, and I uh, got it in a quarter inch. Uh, some tricks I found was, uh, you know it's hot when the polyethylene tubing turns clear. Uh, that's uh, basically liquid at that point. So uh, I'm going to be careful with that. And I'm going to use, I got this, what is this, 10 gauge? 12. Yeah, it's a 10 gauge wire. Uh, I'm going to thread that through the, uh, the middle of the of tube. That way it won't close off uh, when it gets hot. And I tried melting the uh, polyethylene tubing to that wire. It won't stick. So I'll just rinse it out good when I'm done. Um, and then this, this heat gun I'm, I've got. It was a Father's Day gift, pretty sure from Amazon. Um, it's nice because it's got an adjustable temperature in the back and uh, high and low settings. So I'll put it on low and kind of a medium heat. Uh, it needs to be like 120 Celsius. Now we're talking like 250 Fahrenheit to uh, melt the tubing. So pretty warm, warmer than a hairdryer, but uh, any 
any heat gun should work. You can use, I also thought about using a soldering iron or something, but yeah, anyway, we'll see how this goes. Side stuck in. It's not, uh, not warm enough to make a connection yet, but it fits. I'll uh, warm that up and get it on a little bit tighter after after I get this side done too. Okay, you know, maybe I'll connect these better first. This guy turned clear, it's uh, completely off the floor. Okay, I got my wire fed through from end to end. That way, when I heat this up again, I can push these together without uh, and compromising that uh, water flow through the middle. Thank you. 
these two are together. I'm gonna get it nice and warm. And hopefully, you'll get a watertight connection all the way around. So I'm noticing, I feel like it started to collapse a little bit right uh, right here. Uh, so I'm glad I had that wire in there to keep it from going too far. Uh, I feel like I might have gotten it though. Um, uh, it feels pretty strong. I don't want to yank on it too hard. That's because it's still super hot. But uh, I don't know, it looks, looks reasonably connected. All right, I didn't end up doing much more because uh, I was uh, afraid of getting a thin spot on the hole. Um, so I'm gonna pull this wire out now. Uh, hopefully it goes in, comes out easier than it went in. Okay, it turns out we had to tip it over again because uh, it was leaking water. So I didn't get half of this hot enough the first time. Uh, and this time I uh, used this uh, bike pump to get it up to about 50 PSI and dunked it into this water to make sure there's no bubbles coming out. Uh, so it's better this time, and uh, hope it doesn't leak. We're gonna put it back together again using the same steps I did before, and put it back up. Uh, this time a lot cleaner though. We've got a, <laughs> the guts of the fridge are ready to go. All I gotta do is finish this bit. I'm gonna take that as good enough for now, and we'll test it with real water pressure once we uh, get it connected back together. <laughs> now I've got to get this hose back through the it's a conduit, plastic conduit and a wire loom. Hopefully it's not as hard as I'm worried it's going to be. It did go through pretty... Oh, there it went through already. Good. Uh, last time I was just a little worried. It was going to be kind of tight. Alright, now for the, the welded part. We'll see if it can get through. Seems like it. Now I've got to pull the wires and the tube through together to get it connected back up here. Yeah, nice. Okay, so, I can, so I can see the uh, the welded bit, oh, yeah, maybe you can see it too. Down here. Yeah, that's what that's as far as it made it. But uh yeah, there's a change. It doesn't really matter how this turns, I guess it's it's gonna be the, the same length. So uh alright, I'll get this button back up, I think. I was thinking a little more about how the uh the hose cut itself, and I'm wondering if come on, focus. I'm wondering if it, it got caught on a sharp edge here. Uh, it's a little rough. I'm gonna, I might smooth that out before I put it all back together. But I bet as it rubbed and rubbed up against that, it started a tear that ended up uh, being a break. All right, so I've decided to just use uh, some uh, gray duct tape to get that on. Uh, but before I do, better connect this guy. Uh, cause that way I can make sure the wires are actually in the right place. Um, so that was just those two screws.
Alright, that was uh, six, seven, seven screws to get this guy back together. Feeder back on. Now I gotta get, get this wiring harness and ground wire reconnected. Oops. Oh, connections are similar size, but they have different connections. All right, and this ground wire. important. <laughs> Gotta yeah, get this uh, piece of resistance, of course, uh, getting the water hose actually connected. Maybe get a little bit dirty. So I'll cut it off to get a new section and uh, push to connect and I can see that it went all the way in. It feels tight. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, that's it. I think it's ready to come back up. I'm gonna make sure this water line stays up front and out of the way. Uh, I could have disconnected it, but uh, I'll just feed it through again. Okay, there we go. We got it, we got to set it back down. That wasn't recording video. Uh, no, I'm not picking it up again. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, cool. Uh, what you... We got to get the towel out, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this, okay. it's on rollers, so it'll, it'll be okay. Okay. Yeah, right. I was going to plug it in, get the water on. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, see if it's holding water. All right, cool. Yeah, I think it's that was just a little next. wobbly because of the stuff yeah. on that side. Just yeah. Before we push it in, this uh, piece got to go back on. Thirty six screws. Another word of caution: don't uh, don't turn it on for at least fifteen minutes after uh, having it outside. The uh, KitchenAid website was saying um, for the R one thirty four A refrigerant uh, refrigerators, it takes fifteen minutes for the oil to settle back down into the compressor, uh, and for the old R twelve Freon compressors. Uh, it takes 24 hours, so uh, 15 minutes should be fine. Uh, I think the another safe answer is however long it was tipped on the side, wait that long with it right side up to let things settle back in the way they uh, belong. Uh, but I think I'm good with the 15 minutes from uh, KitchenAid. All right, 15 minutes have gone by, so I turned it back on, and uh, I'm gonna run a maybe a gallon of water through this thing. To clean out any debris that's been in there. Okay, let's see if I can get this to focus. So my uh, handy wife is filling a pitcher of water and this thing is definitely not leaking anymore. It's from, uh, from the back of uh, that piece of plastic conduit. All right, so now, uh, now I pushed it back into place. I'm going to use this uh, 5 sixteenths to uh, put the feet down. So uh, uh, that's the raised position, so it's uh, righty tighty. I'll start with the front. We leveled it pretty well so that these, these are pretty flush with the uh, cabinetry around it, which we trust to be level enough. And then I'm going to put this on. So I'm going to get these top hooks on first. And then the bottom thing step in. And then
Alright. Last but not least, we gotta put this uh, trim piece in the bottom again. Oh, thank goodness this is over. For real this time. All right, we've been dispensing water. And it has been dry under here. Yep. This project is fixed. I don't know why any service technician would have turned it down. <laughs> but it's done. It's level enough and stable. I only have uh, I made sure I got it all four feet on the ground pretty strong. <sighs> and that is it. This fridge is fixed. Yeah, shame on uh, KitchenAid for not making freezer drawers anymore. Which is the only official way to <laughs> to fix this thing. But uh here we are. All right. Thanks.